Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection, of course. Today, some classic theorem in, let's say, plane geometry, not really, but uh, classical geometry, um, from roughly 750-ish, which is very surprising. So it looks very old. I mean, 750, that's 250 years ago-ish. Um, so that looks very old, but actually it's something that the old Greeks could have known in some sense. In some sense, not because there's also a higher dimensional version, which I'm not going to show you, just because, well, I can't illustrate higher dimensional pictures. My only reason not to do it. But the plain, plain geometry version is something the Greeks might, might have, uh, could have discovered uh, quite a while ago. And the old Greeks is, of course, then 2,000 years or so. So 250 compared to 2,000 might not be so much anymore, right? Um, but kind of the point is that although it looks very innocent, there are some slight mild technicalities. I wouldn't even call them technicalities. I just call them technicalities. I shouldn't call them technicalities. Some very modern mathematics involved in some sense, um, which, of course, most of you probably know, like complex numbers of projective geometry. Um, and that's something that was not really present in Greek geometry, old Euclidean geometry. So um, maybe that's no, not really surprising in hindsight that this theorem is relatively new uh, compared to what it's actually saying. But well, it doesn't really matter. Nevertheless, it's a really beautiful theorem. It's definitely on my list. And it's about intersections, as we will see. Um, so I should warn you here, there's also a Bezu lemma. So we're going to talk about the Bezu theorem and also a Bezu lemma, which you might know from kind of elementary number theory. That's not what I'm going to explain. Um, it's, it's really geometry. There will be some very, very nice pictures. And we can get started with some very, very easy geometry with lines. So the easiest geometry I can imagine, two lines, and I would like to count the number of the intersections. So as you can see here in my picture, my two lines intersect in this one point. And instead of saying lines, I will say degree one curves and degree one curves. So I would like to count intersection of a degree A curve and a degree B curve in general. In this case, A is one and B is also one. So degree one curve and degree one curve. Um, so well, here are some explicit uh, equations, but kind of you could think of kind of general line equations. So I have two lines and you wonder in how many points actually can two lines intersect, right? A very, very classical problem of Euclidean geometry. And all of you kind of know the answer. Um, there should be exactly one point of intersection, right? So here's one. And what I would highlight here is that one is actually equal to, now surprise, surprise, one is equal to one times one. Uh, why do I write one is equal to one times one? Well, we'll see. I will continue writing uh, something is equal to something times something. So um, F is equal to A times B, you will see. Anyway, so here you have one point of intersections. So those degree one curves, which is the lines, they intersect uh, in one point. I should say generically intersect uh, for the following reasons. Well, you can imagine you have, a, you have a line and you have exactly the same line lying right, right on top of it. That's not a generic intersection. I don't, I don't care about those. But generically, kind of a line and the line intersect in one point. And yeah, that's well known, right? You know that. Well, not quite, you might say. There is this funny game of having a line and a line that runs in parallel. And that's maybe why the Greeks, in the end, weren't able to discover the theorem that I'm going to explain. Um, because actually, to, in order to make the theorem work, you would like to add a point at infinity. Uh, somewhere at infinity, parallel lines will meet. Um, if you have never seen this before, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of a little technical glitch here. But everything I'm going to explain is actually in projective geometry and not in classical Euclidean geometry, which might be really, as I said, one of the main reasons why the Greeks uh, never discovered the theorem. So if you don't care about projective geometry, you care about real geometry, um, then there will be not an equality, but a bound, which is still pretty cool anyway. But let's forget that. Let's, let's really ignore that detail, just the stupid detail, well, stupid, in huge quotation marks, of course. Um, so really, let's ignore it. And let's just say two lines always intersect generically in one point. And well, that's fine, right? That's nice. We know that for a long time. So let's keep on going by increasing the degree, right? So the next would be probably degree one and two. So degree one curve is still my line here. 
uh, given by an explicit equation, if you, in case you want to read it. And what is a degree two curve? Well, there are quite a few degree two curves. An example of a degree two curve would be a circle. So here's a circle. Obviously, this is a circle given by this equation in this case. Um, and that's certainly a degree two curve. And in how many points do they intersect? Hmm, let's think about it for a second. Well, generically, um, they should intersect in two points. And I will make this clear in a second. So as you can see, here's a point. Here's a point. So generically, they inter should intersect in two points. And two, by chance, is one times two, right? So it's kind of the same pattern here. One times two. And before, it was one times one, right? So one was one times one. OK, um, that looks very promising. Maybe it's just they intersect in degree times degree. That's kind of the, uh, the punchline I'm going to I'm going to get here too. And it's kind of the same pattern. So uh, in order to really make it work, you meet, need to extend Greek geometry. Again, the good reason why the Greeks probably didn't discover the theorem, but it took until, as I said, 1750-ish um, to be discovered by uh, named mathematician Bezu. Um, and the point is, yeah, well, you might say now, OK, I have my circle here. And my line might miss the circle, right? It, they could have zero intersections, which is not the number I'm up for. I'm up for two. Um, how can I correct that they have zero intersections? Well, it turns out that the correct way of doing this is to get to the correct a number field, to the correct and huge quotation marks. So over C, that's something I can't illustrate and we usually can't see. So this is a real picture. So I only can draw real pictures um, in R2. You should go to C. And in C, actually, they really would intersect twice again, right? So um, in C, you can get rid of those uh, flaws that they have no intersection. Again, if you like a real picture, the only one I can illustrate, I'm very sorry for that. I can't draw really complex pictures, um, at least not in this dimension. Um, it gets too high dimensional. So complex numbers have the problem that they get too high dimensional too quickly. Anyway, I can draw real pictures. In the real picture, it looks like my, my wannabe equation uh, number of intersections is degree times degree is not quite right. But actually, that's just because my picture is bad and I should draw a complex picture. We well, said they can't. Uh, well, whatever. But let's keep this picture in mind. In this picture, it's kind of, kind of obvious. No matter how you turn uh, your circle, and there will always be kind of, well, you can, also you can think of an ellipse instead of a circle. This is maybe more, well, this is more potato than an ellipse, actually. But anyway. Kind of no matter how you draw your circle, um, you will always have kind of two intersections uh, with your ellipse or with your, generically, you will have two intersections with your ellipse or circle or whatever, the way two curve. So it looks very good if we take complex numbers into account. As I said, projective and complex, that's probably the reason why the Greeks have never discovered this. If you don't know what that means, uh, well, we'll see. You, you get a lower bound and not, not an equality. So if you're up for equality and we are up for equality, you really will need to work on projective geometry and the complex numbers, right? So Greeks, with the old Greeks, uh, knew neither. So um, probably that's, as I said, the reason. I know I sound like a broken broke record, but that's probably the reason why the Greeks never discovered the theorem, which in the end is really just about intersecting curves. A very nice formula for an intersection point of curves. Well, we are almost there, so let's do degree two and degree two. So, what do we expect by now for degree two and degree two? Well, we expect four intersection points, uh, two times two. And here in my little picture with those degree two curves, so it's still the circle, and I took this degree two curve. So, the degree two curve basically is something like a circle, an ellipse, a hyperbola, or parabola. And if you would like to intersect them, you will get the correct number of intersection points. And it kind of doesn't really matter how you arrange your various points here. So, or, or, sorry, not the various points, how you arrange uh, the various uh, curves. So kind of the point is generically they intersect in uh, four points. And I will talk about double intersections in a second. But this is kind of the theorem we are up for. And at this stage, you might want to do whatever degree three and degree two to convince yourself or whatever, and it will work out, which is pretty nice. And the theorem is kind of a very nice theorem of how curves intersect. So we have projective curves. Well, we need this projective. Remember my example of the two parallel lines that do not intersect projectively. That's no problem. 
Uh, if you don't like this, then just put it in brackets. It's not so important. But anyway, um, so generically, those curves of degree x and degree y intersect exactly given by the product. So if you ever wonder, you have a degree 15 curve and you have a degree 12 curve and you wonder about the number of intersections, it's 15 times 12, which is kind of a pretty, pretty, pretty cute, pretty theorem, right? Intersect counting multiplicities, I come back to this in a second, exactly in uh, degree x times degree y times. And if you like the real picture, the only one I can illustrate, then you get not an equality sign. You have to pay a price and you get some, well, just an, uh, an upper bound, right? You can have this, as I explained, you can have in the real world, you could have something like, like this, but you still have at most two <laughs> intersections. Well, that's just what it is. That's just what it is. Complex numbers are usually a little bit better when it comes to solving equations than uh, the real numbers. Uh, the problem with complex numbers is they're harder to think about and they're harder to illustrate. So my illustration skills kind of end with the real numbers usually, and I can't really just draw complex pictures. And there's some, some, some slight more things I should mention here. So there are versions of any field in any dimension, which, well, uh, whatever. So it's really, really general statement, a really cool observation at the end. It's a really, really powerful way to count uh, intersections of curves. And this is really not obvious anymore at one point, right? And the proof is actually not so hard, but kind of um, if you would just naively try to solve it, maybe it's it's really not an obvious problem. Um, and there's some side catches you might ask now if I have a circle and another circle. Again, something we can't really see is you would think, okay, degree two curve, degree two curve, they should intersect four times. I can only see two intersections here. So the first intersection is here and the second intersection is here. But it turns out that they, there are two additional intersections. I don't worry about it too much, but there are two in additional intersections and infinity if you want. So indeed, this intersects again four times, but you would need to go to the projective geometry to really see it. That's just what it is. So um, morally, or well, that's kind of the upshot of this well, here of the theorem that tries to tell us that if we are for equality in this beautiful theorem, then really projective is better. Uh, than usual geometry and complex numbers are better than real numbers. Anyway, so let's talk about multiplicities to wrap up. So if you draw many circles and ellipses, so this is actually an ellipse that doesn't quite fit my, my little illustration here. Um, so these are the ways ellipses could intersect, um, except the one that I just showed you with the points at infinity. Uh, so you always want four, and there are some many, many ways to get four. In this case, kind of four ways to get four. And if you really would solve the equations for those beasts here, um, for those pictures, a link to so this is in the description if you really want to work with the equations and solve them, you will realize that these are not normal intersections, but these are intersections with multiplicities. So um, the corresponding roots would appear multiple times. So each one of here has multiplicity two. So it's actually have two plus two is four. This one is a uh, multiplicity three intersection, and this one is a multiplicity one intersection. So those are the good ones. Th those are the good intersections. And whenever you have something that doesn't quite look like this, uh, which is kind of a generic picture anyway, um, then you have some other degrees. But of course, three plus one is still four. Two plus two is still four. And this is the funniest one ever. Uh, it, it's so parallel as an intersection, you basically can't draw it anymore. It's roughly intersections. It's so parallel that the degree is extremely high here is degree four. So um, so this is of course four, well, four plus zero is, is four. So really in order to make it work, this beautiful theorem, it's really, really beautiful, but in order to make it work, you kind of need to extend what you mean by intersection. You first need to go to a kind of projective world to avoid uh, this parallel line problem. Um, you need to go to a complex world to avoid that equations don't have any solutions. Here's another example of complex. So if you have an equation like x squared plus one and you want to intersect it with the zero axis, x squared plus one doesn't have any real solutions. x squared plus one equals zero. Um, but of course there are two complex solutions plus or minus i. So you kind of need to go to the complex numbers and you would accept that probably uh, pretty quickly. Um, and multiplicity is something, I don't know where it really comes from, but at one point you will see that most of the time 
or equations, whatever, eigenvalues or whatever, you really should count multiplicities. Uh, generically, that won't happen, but there might be special cases where you have higher multiplicities and you just count them. If you have something that intersects in the order four multiplicity, well, it just counts as four instead of one. So kind of that comes for free in some sense after some, uh, after you've seen this often enough. Anyway, so I would like to wrap up now. So the old Greeks weren't able to discover Bezos theorem, I think, because there are some mild technicalities, technicalities in huge quotation marks involved. Like you need to work over complex numbers. You need to work projectively. You need to count multiplicities. But if you ignore those, then the theorem is pretty beautiful. And generically, you completely can ignore those. Uh, theorem is pretty beautiful. If you ever wonder about the number of intersection of two curves, just multiply the degrees and you're good to go. And it's really, really simple formula, really beautiful. As I said, up to the slight flaws uh, about working over complex numbers projectively and counting multiplicities. But well, that's life, we can't change it, whatever. So uh, let me just wrap up and say, um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.